in your kit you will have this simple little board which is an infrared led and photodiode pair now there's a very small circuit attached but i chose this particular board because of its simplicity there are other boards out there with amplifiers on them and such uh, but i wanted to keep this as simple as possible because we're going to directly access the led and the photodiode now the thing is with infrared the human eye can't see it if you power up the led and look at it closely in a dark room you might be able to see a faint red glow uh, this is because the color of the red the color of red that the led produces is actually a pretty wide chunk of the light spectrum so some of that red falls into the range of human vision however most cameras will see infrared so i've got an infrared remote control here and you can see the light when i press the button now i can't see it with my eyes but the camera sees it you can try this if you've got a smartphone or a video camera or even many digital still cameras if you've got a video camera that has night mode that camera is literally moving an infrared filter out of the way of the camera sensor permitting infrared light to get to the sensor normally there's a filter in front of the sensor that filters out infrared because the infrared is unnatural to us uh, my video camera does have infrared mode so here is what we would see if we could see infrared we would see all the colors of the spectrum plus the infrared the photodiode on your board is tinted so as to filter out all light except infrared this is why it appears so dark it's not permitting light through it except the infrared so we only see the visible light spectrum but the plastic is tinted so as to filter out the visible light spectrum but if we point the infrared led through the plastic we can still see the infrared light with a video camera because the plastic doesn't filter out infrared now to use this board we need to provide five volts vcc power and a ground reference you can see the two resistors on the board this one is a current limiting resistor for the led this one is in series with the photodiode between vcc and ground and the out pin is connected at the junction so this simply makes a voltage divider and the photodiode changes resistance according to how much infrared light it sees we get a varying voltage on the out pin so we simply perform an analog to digital conversion with our arduino and we can get a signal or an infrared light level now is that easy or what so let's just do that we'll just hook up vcc and ground and we'll hook up the out pin to the analog a0 on our arduino for experimenting let's just write a short sketch uh, it is available in the downloads though i would encourage you to actually type this out yourself we'll set up the serial monitor and then in the loop function we simply spit out the analog read and this way we can experiment with the board and see what readings it gets keep it simple for now now almost every light source has some infrared in it especially the sun so as you're reading the sensor you'll see the value change as you point the diode towards or away from other light sources uh, one thing we want to ultimately do with this sensor is use it for proximity detection we want to detect when something is cl in close proximity uh, for example we can stick this on the front of our mobile robot and when it encounters a wall the infrared from the led will light up the wall bounce off the wall and in back into the photodiode and we can measure this with our arduino 
we can then make decisions based on the sensor reading, like, you know, back up and turn, then proceed forward again. So lock and load your sketch, upload it to the Arduino, and then watch the values you get on your serial monitor. as you point the sensor in different directions around the room, and as you bring objects uh, closer or farther away. The more infrared light it sees, the lower the number of the analog read, because the lower the resistance of the photodiode, which is pulling the outline closer to zero volts. Now, as you can see, you can get a lot of variation. And in fact, almost all light sources give off some infrared light. Um, my desk lamp, Um, even my LED computer monitor gives off infrared, which is detected when I point the sensor at the screen. Now, as a result, you may notice uh, that you get a lot of stray readings from the ambient light in the room. Now, we don't want that, so we need to shield the sensor. Preferably, we will do this with something that shields all light, like, you know, black tape, or black heat shrink tubing, if you have that. Or even masking tape that you color dark black with uh, a marker. Uh, so with the end open like this, the light from the LED can reflect off of surfaces in front and then bounce back onto the photodiode and then hopefully that will shield the sensor from the majority of stray light, stray infrared light, except for the light reflected off the infrared LED. So once you've got your tube on there, again, experiment around by placing various objects in front of the sensor. Or move the sensor towards a wall and watch the analog values you can get a handle on the threshold you might want to use to detect walls with the plan of mounting this sensor on the front of your mobile robot, which we'll build in the next lesson. Pretend your sensor is mounted horizontally on your robot, move it closer to a wall and at varying angles. Some surfaces will reflect infrared better than others, but you can play with the numbers and decide what threshold you consider a wall detection. Maybe even modify your sketch so that instead of just spitting out numbers to the serial monitor, the serial monitor simply says wall detected when you reach that threshold. Now move the sensor closer and farther from your wall and at varying angles like you are the robot hunting for walls in the room.